Greetings to my colleagues in Zagreb and around the world. Thank you for the opportunity to present my dissertation project, which I submitted to Northumbria University UK this October 2021. I'd like to begin by thanking my supervisor, Dr. Richard Mulholland, as well as the professionals, friends and family who helped me along the way with this project. This dissertation focuses on the issue of the consolidation of friable paint on paper in the context of a particular case study concerning a selection of pattern book pages used in the manufacture of turkey red textiles, which are on loan to Northumbria from the National Museum of Scotland. I'd like to begin by briefly introducing the history and technology of turkey red textile dyeing. Turkey Red is an alizarin-based textile dyeing process with origins in India and arrived in Europe by the 18th century via Turkey and Greece. Perfecting the process in a European context would take many years, but the struggle was considered worthwhile because of the extreme durability and brilliancy of these red textiles, which were light and wash fast like no other red dye known at the time. Turkey Red dyeing arrived in Scotland by the mid-18th century and became established in the Vale of Lafan in Dunbartonshire by the 1770s. Interestingly, by the 19th century, the main export market for the Scottish industry was India and the Far East. Understanding the turkey red dyeing process is complicated because each manufacturer had a different production method and many trade secrets died with the end of the industry in the mid-20th century. Additionally, to protect trade secrets, vital information might have been withheld from published descriptions of the process. Generally speaking, the process follows this pattern. Oiling sumucking, mordanting, dyeing, and clearing. The textile is first impregnated with oleic acid and then immersed in a solution of aluminium salt, which is fixed to the cotton fibers by the oil so that when submerged in the alizarin bath later, the turkey red color is produced. Oiling is vital to the success of the permanency of the color and makes this dye process unique. The technology, chemistry, and the history of turkey red textile dyeing has become a more well-known and well-researched topic in the past decade. The pattern books utilized in the manufacture of these textiles, however, have been referred to as resources, but have been less researched in their own right. The 15 turkey red pattern book pages in question date from 1889 to 1900. They are currently unbound and are mostly double-sided, as can be seen in figures 2 and 3. The foundational support of these pattern book pages is a thin, lightly sized, inexpensive paper commonly known as newsprint, upon which up to three layers of collaged elements are adhered, or sometimes affixed with metal paper fasteners like staples and split pins, as can be seen in figure four. Collage elements include, firstly, original turkey red dyed fabric swatches, which are sometimes supported by backing paper, as can be seen in figure four. Secondly, individual designs, which may be intentionally folded to fit the book format, which are painted either on a type of thick card or on both sides of a semi-transparent vellum or tracing paper, as can be seen in figure 5. And thirdly, labels, which are handwritten in an unknown black or red ink that are attached to either the newsprint or on top of the designs. Besides ink and paint, other media include pencil and carbon transfer markings. When choosing a consolidation method, it is important to consider the context of the object and any limitations and sensitivities there might be. For example, it would not be possible to use a suction table for consolidation because these objects are collaged and double-sided. The paints used to illustrate the turkey red design patterns are by no means uniform in their appearance or behavior in terms of deterioration over time. Broadly speaking, the red color appears to be different make than the other colors, which are likely to be gouache. The gouache paints are generally speaking glossier than the red paint, which is highly matte. The gouache paints show a tendency for poor adhesion to the red ground, particularly in instances of pentimento, while the red paint appears to exhibit no issue with adherence to the paper, but rather to have penetrated into the paper surface. Damages in the form of abrasions, creases, scratches, tide lines, and bleeding ink are only observed in the red color. Regardless of make, however, half the colors have become powdery with age and have a tendency to offset or transfer, which shows a lack of cohesive strength. These paints, particularly the red, appear to have high pigment volume concentration, known as PVC. Such paints have the potential to be porous and underbound, and this can create conditions for poor aging as well as problems when considering consolidation. The identity of the red paint became a primary concern as this informs the manufacture of samples and ultimately defines the success of the consolidation treatment. 
a hypothesis was formed that this paint could be an alizarin lake, also known in this context as turkey red precipitate. Unfortunately, there is no specific mention of a turkey red paint in any known publication, and the only extant recipes from the industry in Scotland are early 20th century laboratory books with cryptic notes on dyeing trials. Also, it is sometimes said that turkey red is not really a dye, it is rather a process and a product, and exists specifically as a complex on textile fibers. According to this definition, turkey red can therefore not exist outside of the textile substrate. However, there are a number of recipes for alizarin lakes in contemporaneous literature, including this recipe for a precipitate of turkey red found in Hummel's 1890, The Dyeing of Textile Fabrics. Also, turkey red dyeing is defined by its use of a mordanting oil. This raises the question of whether an alizarin lake can be called a turkey red precipitate, particularly without an oil component. Having said that, an historic recipe first proposed by Jenison in 1900 does suggest the manufacture of a simple aluminium lake with an oral component. And Harrison's 1930 recipe, Cheap Alizarin Red Lakes for Paint and Decepper Manufacture, does include turkey red oil. An examination of the FTIR spectra could indicate the presence of a mordant as well as a binder, which could provide evidence for a so-called turkey red precipitate. Attenuated total reflectance Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, known as ATR-FTIR, aided in the identification of the paints. Of interest to this dissertation is the result for the red color. By comparing this result to known alizarin pigment spectra, as well as to FTIR results from turkey red dye analysis in situ on textiles, it was possible to come to some conclusions about the red paint. There appear to be a number of clear indicators for alizarin, as shown in figures 9 and 10. However, there are a few features in the ATR-FTIR results that can only be seen in FTIR analysis of turkey red textiles. This includes bands at around 2900 and 2800, which could signify aliphaic CH methylene, especially when indicators for the bending, as well as rocking, of aliphatic CH methylene are also taken into account. This would be consistent with increased CH2 on samples that have been treated with oil, like turkey red textiles, However, these peaks could be attributed to the CH stretching in aromatic hydrocarbons and can be seen to a lesser extent in all FTR paint samples, which are not shown here, as well as in a range of organic materials, including gum arabic. Bands in the area of 1710 are indicative of carbonyl stretching and could potentially signify oleic acids. However, this could represent any number of amino acids or fatty acids with a carboxylic acid functional group. Additionally, a band indicating CO2 stretching found in the red paint, as well as the turkey red textiles, also manisubs particularly strong in an iric spectrum for aluminum sulfate. In pursuit of clearer evidence to support the theory, an FTIR spectrum for Mater Lake was also examined, and the parallels to this result are striking and convincing. The FTIR results prove a persuasive parallel to turkey red in situ on textiles, as well as to modern lake, which could support the theory that the red paint could be an alizarin lake, a so-called turkey red precipitate, which might also have been mixed with a minimal amount of gum arabic. In order to prepare to address the objectives of this dissertation, a literature review focusing on the consolidation of high PVC paints was conducted. The aim of consolidation is to stabilize paint through the application of an adhesive, which replaces the deteriorated cohesion of the binding agent in the paint matrix and improves adherence between media and paper substrate. However, consolidation could easily result in changes to the appearance of high PVC paints, like increased gloss saturation, darkening, and tideline formation, as the voids are filled by an increase of binder relative to pigment, known as low PVC, which causes a drop below the critical pigment volume concentration, the CPVC. The optimal distribution of consolidant would create what in fluid dynamics is known as Taylor flow, whereby plugs of polymer consolidant encompass the pigment particle through capillary action, while bubbles of air form in the pores between the particulates. To maintain the refractive index as well as imbue sufficient adhesive and cohesive strength, it is recommended to choose a consolidant with a low viscosity, meaning low molecular weight and low glass transition temperature at a low concentration, to control the concentration so as not to oversaturate the paint matrix with respect for the properties of the consolidant and the application method. 
and to suspend the consolidant in a solvent, which also includes water, that can easily flow in and out of the paint layer. Based on the literature research, the following consolidants and methods were selected for testing. Funori, isinglass, gelatin, pyroloid B72, methylcellulose, and ethyl hydroxyethylcellulose were chosen and applied with either a paintbrush, within or without a vapor-saturated atmosphere, or with an ultrasonic misting device. An attempt was made to manufacture accurate samples by recreating turkey red precipitate in reference to Hummel's 1890 recipe, as this is contemporary with the make of the pattern book as well as mentioned within the context of turkey red manufacture. The recipe does not speak in specific terms of quantity, time, or temperature. A number of ratios were tested before a good balance of solubility and color strength was struck, but this was purely empirical and could be modified for further study. Alongside this experimental paint, samples with a commercial alizarin gouache were also created for the sake of comparison. Both Bristol paper as well as transparent paper were used, and the transparent paper samples were double-sided. Carbon paper was used to replicate the pattern taken from an original design and painted over with commercial gouache paints. Samples were then artificially aged in moist heat aging conditions at 80 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 65% for 28 days. Consolidation tests were performed in at-home studio conditions. Due to health and safety concerns as well as legal prohibition, the only solvents available for testing were IMS and acetone, which were mixed into consolidant solutions as well as used in the vapor chamber. Simple brush application and misting with an ultrasonic nebulizer were the most accessible methods in this scenario, but the construction of a vapor-saturated atmosphere was attempted. The four samples, uncapped consolidant and open container of solvent, were placed into a plastic food storage container. The container was covered with cling film, which was taped at the edges to prevent air escaping, and then covered with the lid. The chamber was then left to condition for up to two hours before the lid was removed and a hole punctured in the cling film into which a paintbrush was inserted to consolidate the samples. Once the consolidant had sufficiently penetrated the substrate, the cling film was removed and the samples were left to dry. There were a number of issues with the ease of application in the makeshift vapor chamber, including the evaporation of the solvent through the hole, as well as difficulty controlling the amount of consolidant and the delicacy of touch. After considering the characteristics of the chosen consolidants, as well as assessing them practically, it is recommended to consolidate with EHEC and IMS for localized applications and Funori for general applications with an ultrasonic mister. However, this recommendation is more so an invitation to pursue further testing. Unfortunately, there were a number of limitations to achieving a comprehensive examination of consolidation treatment possibilities for the Turkey Red pattern book pages. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic resulted in disruptions to the timing of the phases of this project, as well as access to equipment as facilities were closed in the face of this global health crisis. There are a number of areas of this project that could be re-examined and could stimulate further study. For example, further analysis of the red paint, namely high-pressure liquid chromatography, the testing of other historic recipes for Lizrin Lake and the manufacture of samples for further consolidant testings, artificially aging the samples after consolidation to better assess the results, testing other consolidant options like methylcellulose with propantuol and hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, or trying an atmos bag or airtight dome to create a vapor-saturated atmosphere. The aim of this project was to consider consolidation options for the treatment of a selection of turkey red pattern book pages with hand-painted illustrations of textile designs. The nature and condition of the paint used to illustrate the designs presented a challenging circumstance for consolidation. In order to begin to assess an appropriate approach, the identity of the paints was examined before a literature review of likely consolidants and consolidation methods was conducted. An attempt to manufacture a paint similar to the original according to historic recipe was made in order to produce samples for testing a selection of consolidants and techniques. The result of the project was that despite limitations, two options stood out as potential consolidation strategies and a number of avenues for further research were opened. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to the discussion and answering your questions.